And we are uh, fortunate to be joined by Dr. Tim McKnight this morning on our Talk with the Doc. Welcome in. Thanks. Good morning. And I hope you didn't need any spicy food last night or whatever might cause acid reflux. There, uh, I'm sure it's some different factors of things that could cause that, right? Yeah, and a lot of people have it, and a lot of people are miserable with it, and they'll go reach for something over the counter or go see their provider, and pretty soon they're taking medication every day to control their acid reflux, and... Um, I'm, I'm kind of opposed to that. I, I think we need to <clears throat> think about the root cause and try to prevent it, try to reverse it. It can be dangerous if left untreated. Oh, yes. It can lead to esophageal cancer. Um, so the, the acid is not supposed to be burning your throat as it comes up. The throat was not designed to have a pH of 2 to 3 burning the lining. And those repetitive burns can lead to ulcerations. And as it tries to heal, it's like a scab that can never heal. And every time it's about ready to heal, it, it, the, the acid kind of burns right through the healing process and it's a continual effort to heal and it can lead to precancerous and then cancerous conditions. So we really want to reverse that as if we can. And always in medicine, for me at least, is understanding the root cause. What, what is the body trying to do? And then what is medication doing? So What's happening in our stomach is that it's the only place that I know of that the, that the pH of our body is very acidic. Um, the vaginal canal is somewhat acidic for women to, as a deterrent for bacteria, but the stomach is the most acidic part of our body, a pH of 2 to 3. And its role is twofold. Its role is to be a mechanical device to break down protein. Protein is the hardest of all the macronutrients to digest, harder than than fat and harder than carbohydrates. So if you're thinking like a piece of meat, how do you break that down? Well, you need the mechanical efforts of the stomach, which is a muscle that moves very strong. And then you need acid. Uh, so acid breaks down, breaks down protein. So when protein enters the stomach, it's a stimulus to release this acid to try to help this happen. But again, it's, it's only supposed to be acidic in the stomach. So what does the body do? How does the body prevent it from going anywhere else? Well, as soon as food enters the small intestine, you have uh, bicarbonate from the pancreas that neutralizes that and puts it back at sort of a neutral pH with enzymes that help you further digest proteins, fats, and carbohydrates. But what happens, how does the acid get from the stomach back up into the throat? And some people can actually feel it uh, triggering a cough because it gets up, the acid will splash up as high as the vocal cords and make it triggers a cough. Sometimes you don't even have the burning sensation. You just feel the sensation of cough or you feel like there's something stuck on your throat. Mm -hmm. You have to clear your throat. And what that is is the acid continually kind of burning on the vocal cords and you, you get this mucus production and the mucus lays there as, as a somewhat of a protectant to that acid and then you're clearing your throat all the time. And we, call, we, we describe some of these sensations as water brash, where you have that sensation in your mouth where you start to salivate, almost like you're going to throw up. And that's also the acid reaching really high. So what does the body do to prevent that from happening? Well, there's a muscle between the stomach and the lower part of the esophagus or the food pipe called the esophageal sphincter. And when food goes in the stomach, that muscle tightens up and it prevents anything from splashing back up. So when we're talking about how do we prevent acid reflux, we have to make sure that muscle works well. And many of us have had children, infants, that have that, they're vomiting all the time, they're spitting up really bad. It's because that muscle hasn't fully developed. It takes a while to get nice and tight when it closes. But with adults, why would that muscle not close? Well, it doesn't close well if there's too much nicotine in the body. Nicotine will relax that muscle. Alcohol will relax that, mus relax that muscle. Um, uh, being overweight will relax that muscle because it's a, it's a pressure. If you think about um, sitting and you, you, maybe you've got a little bit of a belly and you're wearing tight pants and there's a pressure being exerted, like pushing in on your stomach, and that pressure also can exert upwards. So it, it causes it to kind of forces that, that little opening to blow open just because mm -hmm. of the pressure. So, again, wearing pants that are too tight, and the bigger your belly, the more likely you are to have that. So uh, that's another cause. So we have alcohol, tobacco, and, and a large belly with tight pants, and then the last one is caffeine. I think that's where a lot of people have their issues because a lot of people are using caffeine as a, 
as in a stimulant to stay awake because we're sleep deprived. And um, so caffeine can also do that. So the first thing we do to try to reverse this is fix all those issues. Cut back on the alcohol, mm-hmm. cut back on the tobacco, whether you're smoking or chewing, cut back on your caffeine. And then there seems to be foods that also can make this worse. And, and a lot of people have experienced this. Uh, chocolate can do it, spicy foods, just eating a lot of carbohydrates, a lot of bread or simple carbohydrates can do it. And I'm not sure why the body makes so much acid for that, but it does. And so those foods you have to cut back on. So th- those are the uh, that's the those are the primary irritants or the reasons why we have this. Uh, now, if it's one of the other complications of of untreat well of treated over treated acid reflux is now what are we doing with these acid blockers? Well, you can take Tums or Mylanta, and that's usually some type of a, um, a bicarbonate or a carbonate that helps to neutralize the acid. Then the next step up is the H2 blockers, and Pepsid is the one that most people will grab. That's over the counter. That's a little bit better than a Tums or a Mylanta. And uh, Tagamet or Zantac used to be on the market. That's now off the market because it's not safe. And then the next step up is Prilosec, Protonix, Prevacid, Nexium. And those have, a, those have a different mechanism of stopping the acid production. So they work well. They neutralize the stomach. But what happens when we neutralize that stomach acid? Well, I mentioned that the, the stomach is acidic to break down protein, um, but the other reason it's acidic is to kill any bacteria that you swallow. I mean, most bacteria can't survive that pH in the stomach. So we've got bacteria in our mouth. Um, that's a, a, lot of, a lot of the bacteria in our mouth is, is, are good, but some of them are bad. And then we eat foods that have bacteria. Sometimes we're eating contaminated food. We don't know it. So now we're swallowing bacteria, and the stomach is a great place to kill that. Yeah. But if, you're, if you've got now, instead of a pH of 2.5, your stomach acid is neutralized, and it's a pH of 7 or 8, you're not killing those bacteria, and you're still having the acid reflux. You're just not feeling it because it's not acidic anymore. So now those bacteria are refluxing up. Uh, you're kind of coughing, clearing your throat, especially at night when, you know, sometimes we almost choke on ourselves. If you aspirate some of that, that content of your stomach into your lungs, and there's bacteria there, it can lead to um, pneumonia. People don't realize, I, I have a good friend that actually died of this. She was taking four Nexium a day to control her acid reflux, didn't realize that it was causing any harm, and she developed a nasty pneumonia. And pneumonias that are generated from acid aspiration are very dangerous. They're, they're tough ones to treat. They can be treated, but um, in her case, it wasn't treated soon enough and effectively. So we don't want to be changing what nature or God has created for us. We want to fix the problem. So those are the things that I would tell people to do. Now, another reason that there, we may have acid overproduction is... You think about um, what does the stomach do with food that's been cooked, maybe a hamburger out on the grill, and you don't eat all the hamburgers, and so you put them in the refrigerator in a Ziploc bag, and a couple days later you put it in the microwave and warm it up. Well, every time you cook a protein, you, you make it harder and harder to digest. And you've seen these pictures of a McDonald's hamburger, you know, um, today and a year later and it looks the same right <laughs> they don't they don't break down right and so that's a clue that it's going to be hard to digest yeah. so foods that have been over over treated over cooked or re- cooked repetitively are harder to digest and in my opinion uh, anything any processed food is going to be harder to digest nature said i'll help you out you're eating a grape you're eating a tomato there's enzymes here you chew this well i'm going to help you with that digestive process because i got enzymes in live food that will help you but if you're eating you know a triscuit or you know you're eating something that's packaged in a in a box or a bag it's a lot harder to digest because it's it's a, it's we call it dead there's no life in it there's no enzymes mm-hmm. And so it takes, it takes more effort for the stomach to digest it. So if you're going to eat those foods, which I don't really recommend you eat those frequently, but if you're going to eat those foods and you're having an issue with acid reflux, you can do two things. Chew it really well. Help uh, make it easier on your stomach to digest it. Make sure it goes down like, like applesauce by the time you swallow it. Most of us don't do that. We just 
soon as we can. We it's like we're going to starve if we don't get this food in as fast. So slow down. Put your fork down. Chew it really well. Swallow it when it's the consistency of applesauce. And then the second thing we can do that might help us with this is take food enzymes. And you can get food enzymes from the health food store. And uh, you can the food enzymes usually try to mimic the three enzymes that we need in, in our uh, intestinal tract. So there's enzymes to digest proteins called proteases, and there's lipases for fats, and there's, um, I'm trying to think of the one for carbohydrates. It's not coming to me. Amylases. Uh, so the amylases will help you with those. So you get these food enzymes from the health food store and take those with your meals if you've got acid reflux. But try to reverse this. Try to get away from taking, especially the prescription medications, because when we prescribe them, people say, yeah, it finally works. We finally, I finally got something that works good. I feel good. This is great. Thank you. I just need you to keep refilling this. Yeah. But after 12 weeks, the, f- the pharmaceutical companies that are, the package insert says, you're not supposed to use it for more than 12 weeks. See your provider. And sometimes they'll send us a letter, hey, do you realize th- this patient has been on this for more than 12 weeks? You might want to talk about step-down therapy, which is step-down therapy. From that goes to maybe Pepsid or Tums or Mylanta. And they do that. I think there's a, a they need to do that legally to protect themselves mm-hmm. from lawsuits. But I think they're kind of hoping that, oh, boy, uh, I hope you keep prescribing it because, you know, we're benefiting here. But um, the whole point here is understanding what natural physiology is doing, what happens when we interfere with that, which is it's never good when we think we can outsmart Mother Nature or our creator, and and then try to get back to the the way it's intended to be by changing our lifestyle. So are you, are you willing, I'll make this short, are you willing to have some treatment while you see progress in people that are uh, trying to get rid of the belly, get, uh, you know, decrease their carbs and, and uh, take the right steps? Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't I don't mind uh, putting somebody on something, whatever works. So we usually start with the first line. If Tums works, then do that. If not, then try Pepsi. If not, then go with a, a, a Prilosec OTC is the, is the next lineup that's over the counter. Mm-hmm or a prescription level, a proton pump inhibitor, and treat it temporarily, but always the goal is let's fix the problem and get you off the prescription. That's the same goal I have for somebody that's got high cholesterol or somebody that's got hypertension. Let's fix the root cause here and see if we can get you free of a a reliance on medication. Well, there you are. You don't have to have acid reflux. So, good. It's a sign that something isn't right. Yeah. The body's saying, hey, you're, you're doing something that I don't like, and I'm trying to get your attention, and a prescription pill is not the solution I'm looking for. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, thanks for offering a different solution. I appreciate right. that. You're welcome. Dr. Tim McKnight, as we talk with the doc this morning.